Welcome back to a yet another episode of What's On Your Mind. We obviously had a show last week, but given the current market environment and all the volatility we're seeing, we thought it'd be great to put in an extra show this week. So joining me today, I've got Chris Cathy and Anthony Isa, uh, both ITPM senior trading mentors, of course. And gents, you were actually uh, on the show not too long ago, a few weeks ago, episode 37, I believe. So it's great to have you both back on. I'm looking forward to hearing some updates from you both. A uh, lot's been happening in the market since then, um, so I think we should delve right in. Chris, what's your take on everything at the moment? Um, yeah, we've had a, a bit of a crazy roller, roller coaster. Um, volatility has clearly come back into town in a big, big way. Um, I must admit, I've never seen anything like the speed of the moves and the the, um, the magnitude of going from an all-time high to a correction on the S&P in five days has never happened before. Yes, we've had big moves in the S&P, but from an all-time high, high to a correction period is um, never happened before. So we had the, the VIX, the um, volatility index, went from 15, which is around about its historical average, to 50, 5, 0 in five days. Again, unprecedented. Now, I think when we've got big moves in the market like this, uh, at least in the initial moves, you tend to find that correlations increase between sectors and stocks. So we tend to have go from having a market of stocks to having a stock market where either everything's going up or everything's going down. When, yeah, we had some big moves to the downside and we had a big move to the upside. Um, and um, I think one of the key things to remember in this environment is just, uh, first of all, yes, we always talk about uh, volatility uh, creates opportunities. Yes, absolutely, but you've got to be in the right uh, position to exploit those opportunities. The first thing is that just remember that your position sizes don't have to be the same at all times. So position sizes, typically when you get a more volatile market, um, it should be smaller than when you're running a long short portfolio. Because clearly, with increased volatility, you can make the same returns on less capital deployed. The second thing is that when you sort of see a pickup in the, the VIX, so maybe north of the 20 level, uh, we're on the basis that the VIX historical average is around about the mid-teens. Over the last few years, we've got it down into single digits. But when you see the VIX pick into the 20s, um, and maybe think about reducing your long short portfolio, free up some capital to, to, to take a, um, opportunity, take the shorter term opportunities. Because yes, no question, we've had fear and panic over the last week and a half, and this creates opportunities. On the flip side, when you see the volatility come up into, uh, into the, say, I'd say north of 35 to the 40s, maybe that's this is when you want to think about sort of maybe reducing some of your exposure because uh, that's typically sort of peaks in volatility going into the sort of 40, 50 level. Um, bear in mind the fix, um, is just the um, the implied volatility of the S&P options expiring over the next, last, next 30 days. So when you've got volatility up into 50, that means that options tend to be very expensive. So rather than think about trading options, you think about trading CFDs. Now, how to trade a shorter term uh, volatile market? First thing is have much tighter stops and have much smaller targets. That you have to be flexible and you've got to be in motion. Uh, so this is the opportunity, you know, we talk about sort of the institute, but sort of um, for 80% of the time, day trading opportunities are not there. We're in a window where, for, this is the 20% window where day tra trading opportunities are there, and you need to be flexible, and you need to be able to take, take care of, uh, to exploit those opportunities. Now, um, one of the things we have been talking about is that, what's the Fed going to do? Well, the Fed have already cut rates by 50 basis points. Um, now, is that going to be effective? Well, only time will tell because I think um, Anthony's going to touch on some of the supply and demand issues. But yeah, the Fed have come to the rescue. The uh, euro dollar market's pricing in rates of another 50 basis points cut by the year end 2020. So we'll see what happens. But um, I think we need to um, reassess because clearly, well, in my opinion, volatility is going to be here for a while. What do you think, Anthony? Couldn't agree more, Chris. And uh, that is a very succinct um outline of what to do in these volatile markets so if uh the viewers out there want to rewind one minute and listen to it again and take some notes it's probably the best value you'll get uh anywhere uh, in the next couple of weeks but yes the issue um obviously the fed uh is there to pump prime on uh and get the demand side of things going it's impossible not to talk about the coronavirus and its impact on markets now, uh, we can all speculate about what's going on, um, and I've got my own speculations, and what we want to try and do, though, is base those off uh, as much factual data as we can. Um, I think, simplistically, the numbers show that the US has 
thus far totally mismanaged things. And so the expectation should be that things get worse before they get better. Um, as Raj mentioned uh, in uh, the last What's On Your Mind, the market's sort of pricing in a Q1 demand issue here. Um, but if it drags on longer than that, uh, then you know we're, the, the market's going to have to reassess things. And I suspect it will. Um, so let's pop up some charts here quickly. I won't dwell too much on it, but here's some traffic data from Wuhan, from Shanghai uh, over the last week or so. And this is not traffic data that suggests any turnaround in um, in activity in these places. And these are the hubs of the supply side. So as Chris mentioned, 50 basis point cut from the Fed. Well, that's great for the demand side, but the Fed can't do anything about the supply side. And with 40 years of um, just-in-time uh, manufacturing and inventory processes, yeah. we are now yeah. going to uh, see the impact um, when some of these supply chains dry up. Uh, in fact, the manufacturing ISM uh, data that came out uh, uh, earlier this week suggested uh, with comments that some people are already starting to see tight supplies uh, and prices going up. So this is going to be an ongoing issue. Um, now, I wouldn't suggest going and building a portfolio of entirely short ideas or virus trades, um, but it's very well worthwhile considering and trying to find some stocks um, that maybe uh, you think might be sort of underperformers anyway, uh, that could uh, continue that or be exacerbated uh, by uh, an ongoing uh, situation with both demand and supply affected. So I've found one which I think looks particularly interesting. Um, so Live Nation is the stock. Um, it's the biggest player in tickets, in concerts uh, and live events. Uh, in the US and, and uh, internationally uh, expanding quite well uh, for the last num number of years. 70% uh, of its growth last year actually came from its international uh, divisions. It's a company that's uh, not made a profit at all over the last five years. It's been trying to grow and grow rapidly by acquisition and organic growth. Um, the top line's grown a bit, but not as much as you would expect. Um, 10.4 billion, 10.7, 11.5 for the last three years. Expectations that it'll be slightly up in 2020 towards the 12 billion mark. Um, but that's where I see the risk. Uh, so it's a company, there's no PEs here. Um, it, hasn't, it hasn't made a cent, although people were looking for it to, to turn to profit this coming year. But margins are... Um, 2.6%. Um, and when you've got skinny margins like that, you can't afford hits uh, to the revenue line. And the whole sector, as you would imagine, uh, is probably under the same sorts of pressure. Uh, I looked at a couple of other names there, but there was reasons not to look at them um, from the short side. Something like Madison Square Gardens um, uh, has traded down a lot as well. Uh, they could possibly shut down Madison Square Gardens for for six months if this virus kicks off, but there is probably about $6 billion in uh, NBA franchises uh, with, a, with uh, the own ownership of the New York Knicks. So there's some support there uh, that would see through any, uh, any downturn. So Live Nation results came out recently. Um, and as I said, top line was growing okay. They've got three major divisions for this company. Uh, ticketing, you would know Ticketmaster, so they literally just clip the ticket on the way through. Uh, they have concerts, which is the biggest part of their revenue. Uh, and then they have sponsorship, which is actually the biggest part of their profit uh, or their, their, um, their net uh, operating income. The, the way to think about this company is that the concerts are essentially uh, their... Uh, their costs, uh, they lose on their concert offering, uh, but they sell a huge amount of sponsorship around it and obviously uh, clip the tickets as well. Um, they are looking for double digit uh, growth in number of fans showing up and ticket sales uh, in 2020. And the first month or two, that's all looking okay. But again, those numbers were uh, pre, pre virus. Uh, they did comment on the virus um, uh, and highlighted that uh, less than 1% of their earnings come from the affected areas. But this was at a time when China and Asia were slowing. Uh, they've seen 
17 shows in China cancelled, uh, 70 shows um, coming up in Asia, so not a lot uh, and very little in Italy as well. But what they haven't done is made any allowance for what's going on um, in North America. And so with expectations from me that that's going to get worse, um, I think you can see a real hit to the top line here, which will flow through very aggressively given those thin margins. Um, and you don't need a big hit. Uh, even just a quarterly um, hit uh, is going to see a bit of a chunk off numbers. Uh, there's a chart you'll see on the screen now showing uh, earnings forecast for historical years and future years. And what you'll see here is as, the, as those earnings forecasts have played out, analysts have historically cut their numbers. So there's not a good job in terms of uh, managing expectations on what that bottom line is going to look like. And I think this time it's going to be um, uh, significantly worse. Um, as Chris mentioned, volatility um, makes looking at the options market very, very tough. Uh, if you did want to do something there, you could potentially look at a calendar spread. If you were to, if you were to take the view that okay, yes, uh, short term could be weak, but uh, longer term this might be okay. Potentially, you could uh, sell a short term call and buy a longer term call and. Um, and it sort of might be effectively running, not for next to nothing, but for significantly less than you would pay. But ultimately, um, I would head to the CFD market, like Chris said, um, and look to short this, keeping stops, um, you know, it's pretty tight, but more importantly, keeping the volume down um, uh, in this type of market so you don't, don't get your head ripped off. But the catalyst here, as I said, is declining revenue, a profit warning, they'll have to come out and say, okay, We've cancelled this, we've cancelled that. We're seeing signs of um, concern and with very, very skinny margins, uh, that's going to decimate any chance of them turning to a, being a profitable company. If this continues through to the middle of the year, it's the big summer festival, um, it's the bulk of their revenue, you will start to see people cancelling these now um, at some stage. Not only will you see people on the demand side, people saying, I'm not going to buy tickets, but no one will be willing to put on an event because they're incredibly costly, huge fixed costs. And unless you think you can cover those, you're insane to put it on. Um, so you will see a lot of events being cancelled, even though they may be six months away. Um, should this, uh, this virus uh, kick off a little further, and it's very hard to see how that won't happen given the underlying data. Uh, so there's my short. Chris, have you got anything on the on the positive side of things to cheer cheer people up a bit? Well, I've got a positive side. Yeah, uh, sounds like a great short, mate. Actually, it's, um, I must admit, it does seem as though from from outside the US that the US seems to be rather behind the curve when it comes to dealing with uh, the implications of the coronavirus. So, well, um, yeah, that sounds very interesting, mate. Very interesting. Well, on the positive side, um, I'm just going back to the um, the. Um, Institute playbook, <clears throat> looking for earnings growth, looking for companies that are delivering on numbers and uh, guidance. And one which uh, to me was uh, Booz Allen Hamilton, their business services, their consultancy accountancy company. Um, market caps around about 10 billion. Um, beat the third quarter numbers when they released numbers at the end of January and raised guidance by 11% for the full year 2020. And um, that just that's just something I want to get along. Um, P ratio 22.5. Versus the sector of 21, so it's a nice premium, but not too much. Clearly, it's a quality name. Uh, it's had an earnings growth around about 12 and a half percent over the last five years, and uh, yeah, it's uh, raised guidance and uh, looks to be and it's consistently delivering on numbers. Uh, again, uh, yes, you could buy some longer data calls, but not with the volatility where it is. So that for me, this is just a straightforward CFD position. Um, and remember that in this market, you probably don't need to have a full position that you would do when volatility is low. So just bear that in mind. But yeah, one for me on the long side with the Booz Allen Hamilton. Um, flipping over to a short, um, again, straight from the ITPM uh, playbook, I like companies that miss numbers. And uh, one that flagged to me was um, a company called Greenbrier, um, down about 25% this year. But it's uh, missed earnings every quarter last year, which I like that in a short. Simple, missing earnings. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not overcomplicated. It's on a P of nine relative to sector of around about 12 and a half. It's uh, cut um, missed no numbers at the start of January and um, just basically saving, first of all, a slowdown in demand in the US, 
um, it's a freight car manufacturer, a uh, real, real freight, uh, manufactures and leases uh, freight cars in the US, so citing a slowdown in demand, and also it's got real structural problems in, um, in uh, Europe. Made a few acquisitions in Europe over the last five years, clearly things have not worked out, and they are really dealing with some operational problems which are, are going to get worse before they get better. So I would say green buys on the short. It, the only thing that may, makes me a little slightly nervous is it's a market cap of around about a billion. Um, so preferably when you get to this sort of size of company, it's probably safer to be um, just rather just long puts, longer dated puts, but again, pay on volatility. Um, but I think this has got at least a 50-50 chance of being chapter, chapter 11 by the year end. So that's um, uh, long booze on Hamilton and short Greenbrier will be a long, long short uh, pay on at the moment. Again, just bear in mind, position sizes are key in this market. So how about you, Andy? Anything positive? I do. Um, although hey. I'm not, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be stepping up just now. So, yeah. I mean, given the volatility in the market and given uh, the price momentum on a lot of stocks, this is, a, this is a premium stock trading at a very high PE and a super quality high growth company. And it is uh, Zendesk. Uh, which is obviously software service company, uh, internet services starting uh, out as uh, support, uh, moving increasingly into uh, broader CRM um, offerings uh, and now starting to build a marketplace along the same lines as uh, Salesforce's app marketplace. So it's been growing revenue 37, 36, 39, 35% uh, year after year. Uh, it's moved to profitability uh, recently. As a, as a result, it does still trade on a very hefty PE, a um, couple, of, couple of hundred times, um, but dropping rapidly. The earnings growth um, is uh, significant and it's not a stock likely to be massively impacted by um, any sort of economic slowdown. Of course, there will be some, but it is also a sort of transition and a cost reduction for some of these companies. But they've got a whole bunch of things going on that make it look uh, attractive. Um, one of the things which I won't go into full accounting nerd um, <laughs> mode, but uh, they make a, a gap at general accepted uh, accounting practices uh, loss, uh, but they do report a non-gap profit. Um, what this is, is um, the difference is the share-based compensation. So they offer a lot of shares to retain top talent. Uh, the share price changes. The obligation that appears to be owed uh, goes up a lot, uh, impacts uh, profit, but effectively they're giving away a number of shares. So that that difference um, winds up in the pocket of the, uh, of the employees, not in their numbers. Stacks up very well against the sector, uh, as I said, growing at 48%, uh, 65% next year. The, the industry is growing at uh, sort of low double digits. Um, and as again, limited Im Im impact um, from, from anything to do with the virus. Uh, the couple of key things, $45 million of free cash flow and growing every year, uh, this helps um, uh, just it gets reinvested into the business uh, and 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 helps grow uh, all aspects. So the margins are going up, uh, gross margin of seventy five point three percent, much better. Uh, obviously, much different company as well from Live Nation, but I'd rather have a seventy five percent margin than a two point seven percent margin. Um, they are growing outside the US, but the biggest thing for SaaS companies like this, software as service, uh, is you want to grow your uh, annual recurring revenue, and they've just ticked over a billion dollars um, in this result, uh, forecasting about one, just under 1.1 1 .1, uh, for 2020. Um, everything was broadly in line with the market. Uh, customer acquisition is strong with new customers, but as I said, that annual recurring revenue, one of the big ways that you can increase that is to move up the chain in terms of the size of clients. Uh, and offer more products and get more revenue from the client that's already on your books. And it's a very cheap way uh, of growing your revenue as well. So that expands margins rapidly. They're doing that via Zen Sales, which is a, a new product offering. The marketplace that I said, uh, Sunshine, um, Sunshine Suite, which is a social media offering. So they can now provide um, support services on every um, 
every social media platform as well as sort of live help and the standard sort of chats. I did have a look at options in this one again, and Chris, right, you are um, just too expensive to do anything. Um, so this is one time where we want to have a, a strong look at price action, though. You need to sit back and wait for uh, this market volatility um, to, to finish up. Uh, the stock, yeah, I mean, the stock could wind up anywhere. We just don't know. Um, currently trading at 71. Um, I would think by the end of the year, uh, this stock will be well back over $100. Um, or sorry, not back over 100. It hasn't been over 100, um, but I think it will be over 100. But the question is whether you're buying that at 56 or 76 or 82. And so you want to wait for the price action to see things bottom out. Um, and know um, that we've exited this period of volatility um, because, again, it's one of those baby with a bathwater um, stocks where uh, it's getting punished unduly. Uh, but therein lies the opportunity for us. So, yeah, I've got something rosy. We just need to be patient on this one. Well, maybe something about that idea. It would maybe like just have a, like a ten percent position or something, just to have something, and then yep. look to increase it at some stage. Because, yeah, uh, in my opinion, um, volatility is probably going to be here for a while. But ultimately, at some stage, volatility will come back to normal. We will get yep. back to normal conditions. How long that takes? How long is a piece of string? But this is not afraid to sort of maybe dip your toe a little bit. Yeah, but totally do not right. have full position. Do not have full yeah. positions. Excellent. Um, well, gents, pleasure as always. I think we'll finish up there. Uh, there's obviously a ton of opportunity given the volatility that we're seeing. Um, and it's great to hear, you know, your ideas and your thought process in this environment. I'm sure it's going to be really helpful for our viewers. Now, uh, for, for those of you watching, um, don't forget to head to our ITPM website if you want to learn more about the events that we've got coming up, such as uh, seminars and webinars, um, perhaps some more webinars and seminars coming up. Um, and also for you guys that, are, that haven't yet dipped your toe into ITPM education, um, then uh, now's actually a great time to do so because we have our ICDP discount program running uh, so you can get some good discounts on our video education and I'll put uh, some information or a link to some information about that below the video. But for now, that's all from us. I hope you all have a great weekend and make sure you join us next time for another episode of What's On Your Mind.